Hey guys, Tyler Ansman here, Tyler Ansman Performance. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about kind of your athletic pyramid and specifically the base today. So we're going to stick to general movement quality and work capacity along with hypertrophy. All right, so general movement quality basically is just your ability to move well through all planes of motion. So sagittal plane, frontal plane, transverse plane, and your ability to adjust to, adjust to variable movements like you would in a game situation. Right, so this is when your program is going to be pretty general and it's going to give you kind of a taste of a lot of different things. Um, as you move on in your athletic journey, you're going to need to get more specific with what you're doing in order to see results on the field. Uh, but when you're young and new to training, at this point, pretty much anything you do is going to make you better on the field for the most part. Um, so this is kind of why people think that playing multiple sports is important for your long-term athletic development. And that can be helpful, but it doesn't necessarily need to be um, what you do. If your training program is well-rounded enough and you're getting enough um, variety in your movements that you're just not doing your sport-specific movement all the time, all year round, you're probably going to be okay. Um, multiple sports can be helpful here, but they're just not necessarily necessary. Um, so down here we also have work capacity. Work capacity is just your ability to tolerate a high volume of uh, high quality work, right? So it's when you can get to the point where you're not getting so tired from what you're doing that the quality of your movement suffers, right? So that's just your, your ability to kind of uh, to tolerate that. This will be a pretty stable base. Once we've built these things, they require significantly less attention than they did in the beginning. Um, so from there, we can kind of build up these other uh, fitness qualities kind of on top of it because this base is pretty stable. So the next one we'll go to is hypertrophy. So hypertrophy, basically the goal is just to build uh, a bigger muscle fiber. So this is going to be done through medium to high rep ranges um, with moderate loads. So this will be the 6 to 12 rep range, um, you know, not, not crazy heavy weights. So at this point what we're trying to do is we're going to build a bigger muscle fiber and that's going to equate to greater strength, right? Greater muscle cross-sectional area equals greater strength. And we know one of the big separators between uh, amateur and professional athletes is not only this lean mass, so hypertrophy here, it's also that strength level, right? Strength is kind of our base for power, so it's a pretty important thing that we kind of build these in order, all right? Because one kind of uh, builds on the one prior to it, and so if we don't have a good base down here, it's going to be pretty difficult to kind of build these things up after that. Um, so not only is hypertrophy going to help with your strength levels, it's also going to help make that soft tissue more resilient to injury. Um, and that's, that's a pretty important factor when we're talking about uh, long-term athletic development and just kind of getting better in your sport, right? Uh, if you can't practice or play, you're probably not going to develop at the same rate as other players who manage to stay healthy through their whole season and off-season. Okay, so how do you go about uh, building muscle mass? So there's three pretty important factors in terms of doing this. Um, so one of, the first one is uh, your nutrition. So we want to be eating in a caloric surplus. Um, and we want to make sure that we're getting adequate protein intake. So this probably means tracking your food. Um, subjectively saying you don't eat very much or you eat a lot or you're getting plenty of protein, whatever, is trash because we don't have any objective data to kind of make changes from there, right? If we don't know what and how much you're actually eating, how do we change anything, right? Well, we can make assumptions, but that doesn't do us very much good. So track what you're eating. Um, for most people, uh, 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight is, is adequate. Um, much higher than that is just pretty unnecessary unless your uh, caloric intake is, is super, super high. Um, and that would involve a lot of activity and probably wouldn't lend itself well to hypertrophy anyway. So the second portion um, of, of what's important to build muscle mass is that we need to be training that 6 to 12 rep range and we need to train with a, with a fair amount of volume. Um, so in terms of uh, compound movements, I like to stay closer to the six rep range because I tend to see form deteriorate faster with those heavy lifts where they're more complex. Um, and then I can go with heavier rep ranges for the assistance movements. Um, I, I think that it's important to build strength across uh, these rep ranges just like it is through a variety of movements. Um, so make sure that we're getting a variety of rep ranges in your training plan as well because that will also help building that soft tissue resilience. Um, and then factor number three is that you've gone through puberty. If you haven't gone through puberty yet, you just don't have the requisite anabolic hormones to kind of make uh, muscle mass growth happen. Um, so before that point, you're better off focusing on general movement quality, work capacity. You'll still gain some strength. It's just going to be mostly through neural adaptations. And then once you go through puberty, then you can focus on building muscle mass if, if that's a need for you, which it probably will be. Uh, but before that point, you're just not going to do yourself a whole lot of good by trying to uh, gain muscle mass and basically banging your head against the wall. 